Welcome back to your Tuesday morning on your Feel Good uh, Breakfast show. Now, of course, the holidays have just uh, officially kicked off, which is good news for everyone, which means we are all thinking about the sun, about the sea, and a whole lot of stress. Yeah, all the yep. parents out there, of course. So today we're joined by our resident, Dr. Darren Green, to chat about some tips going into mm. the festive season. So if you have any holiday health-related questions, give us a call on 021-430-9881. Good to have you back, Dr. Green. Are you well, sir? Fantastic. Excellent. Fantastic. How's, how's that? Tennis elbow. Uh, the it? bag's better now. I'm ready to go <laughs> back there. <laughs> All right. So when it comes to traveling during uh, the holidays, some people are very unfortunate and they, they get motion sickness, especially on these long road trips yes. that are supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be taking beautiful pictures. Sure. Why does it happen? Why do we get motion sickness? It happens mostly in children, age 2 to 12. Mm. Uh, sometimes you, you outgrow it a bit later on. There's certainly a bit of a genetic component. Some people think it's just a mental thing, like how strong you are mentally. Yes. There's definitely a bit of a, a health uh, mechanism to it. It's about the, uh, the the body's ability to adjust your your eyes uh, the vestibulo in the ear the vestibulum yeah. the labyrinth and you know the labyrinth that and the cochlea those things that look like a shell mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm. uh, involved with maintaining equilibrium and balance so when you tilt your head and you're running for example the earth doesn't move like uh, like a waveform yes. does when you're jogging. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. stays there. Yeah. So what the eye reflex does with the ear, it communicates with each other and orientates you to the horizontal plane. Okay. And people that have motion sickness basically have an exaggerated or overstimulated response. Mm -hmm. That's the advice not to read in a moving car. That's the advice not to sit, sit at the back of a car with suspension that's busy like a boat. And the movement typically of the boat also then keeps bobbing and moving the head. Yes. And that causes obviously a, a disequilibrium in the inner ear. So your, your reflex just might be a bit hyper hypersensitive. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will be calling right now on 021-430-9881 to, to find out how you can stop it from happening because you just named two yeah, of the ways now. Definitely. Don't sit at the back of the car uh, because of the... You know, the suspension the motion of the ocean. Uh, yeah. <laughs> motion of the ocean. Right. Or reading in the car. But is there anything else? Some people say just stay at the horizon. Just look at that straight line in the horizon. Yeah, fixate on a point, yeah. So that you don't have the constant uh, variability of your vision jumping up and down. Yeah. Ventilation, having fresh air coming through certainly does help quite mm -hmm. a lot of people. And then obviously if it's really bad and you can't stop... Uh, vomiting, then you, you one would want to take medication yeah. to know you that sedative beforehand. So making sure that you're always stocked up with the right kind of meds in your yeah. first aid kit when you are going on a road trip. And then of course, falling asleep at the wheel. The That's a big one now. Hey? So many accidents during the festive season and families Correct. losing loved ones. Super, it, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's uh, not there. you know, yeah. a, a great statistic that we, we're trying to get that down in South Africa. So what, what's the best practice when you're driving on your holiday to I, stay? I, yeah, alert? I always ask the truck drivers because I see some of them in the ER or in the casualty with different uh, accidents and so forth. What happened, what went wrong, how yeah. did they stay awake? Uh, and you know that the issue is planning. I mean, sleep deprivation affects your concentration. It affects your ability to focus, and it happens so subtly, you'll find yourself just drifting on the road, and often you then yeah. just jerk yourself back. Used to ha it's happened to many doctors and nurses that work long hours, 12, 36 hour shifts, and yep. then get on the road. So I think the best thing is preparing. Having a good night's sleep before you get onto the road is essential. Yeah, absolutely. You are playing with your life and other people's lives if you don't plan to get a decent amount of hours sleep before going onto, onto the road. Stopping at regular intervals. Some people use things to keep them awake, like caffeine or, or uh, any stimulants mm -hmm, of sorts, mm -hmm. you know, you, all the energy drinks and so forth. Yeah. Remember that doesn't, that affects your concentration. You might be awake, but it uh, can impair concentration. Just like too much caffeine yeah. can keep you awake and prevent you from actually feeling tired but it doesn't mean you can concentrate better. Mm -hmm. So your delayed reaction times, <coughs> even although you're awake, and that's what people don't understand about taking uh, energy drinks and stimulants as well. On yeah. the road. Great advice there, and of course, I would always say preparation is the best yeah. thing. Uh, get 100%. enough rest and make sure that you drive uh, for as much time as there is sunlight instead of driving during the And during, stop, uh, stop, night. you know, yeah. stop and, and take breaks, All right. toilet breaks uh, and so forth, and plan, maybe even get someone to alternate with you if you There can. we go, there we go. Okay, well, if you've got some tips to share with us about how Indeed. you avoid falling asleep at the wheel while you're driving on your festive <coughs> holiday road trips, give us a call on 0214309881. We'll be talking more about holiday health shortly. It's my feel good breakfast show. All right, back mm. again with Dr. Darren Green. We're talking about all things holiday health and how to yes. keep yourself and your family safe. We've got a caller on the line. Uh, Shelly called us on 0214309881, all the way from KZN. Good morning, wow, Shelly. Lovely. Good morning. How Good morning, are you? Doctor. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, thank you. Excellent. What is your comment or question? 
My question is about air travel. People talk about the recycled air in airplanes yes. now. And uh, some people say you should spray something in your nose or put some sort of ointment in your nose to prevent breathing in the germs. What is your opinion? Great question. Yeah, so you do get uh, bacterial topicals for the nose, like Bactroban nasal and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Keeping the, the, the nasal cavity moist is obviously also important with the sinus symptoms and the congestion and all that kind of thing. So that certainly could help. In terms of uh, decreasing the, the load of bacteria, mm -hmm. I think what works quite, quite well is actually just watching what you touch and also keeping your hands clean before mm. eating. So eating on the plane and, and your hands and, and the sanitary towels and perhaps a bit of, uh, you know, hand uh, wash Sanitizer, that you Sanitizer, if you will. Yeah, the water Some people even go stuff. about rubbing all over. They, they take their, <laughs> you know, their, their sanitizers and rub them all over. Yeah, and I've seen sitting. a lot of people wear masks on planes because yes. of influenza and bird flu and all that kind of thing. So certainly people are aware of the close proximity, which mm -hmm. increases your risk of contracting those germs. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so there are a few options that you that you can uh, utilize, obviously within uh, within reason. Yeah. All right, Chili. I hope that that is very helpful to you, and thank you so much for the call. Now, from travel, from travel, we move to the sun. We are going to oh. be spending a lot of time in the sun if you're chasing no, the yeah. summer. Um, spending time out on the beach, trying to absorb that vitamin D, trying to get that tan on. But how much time is too much time and dangerous time in the sun when you are out there enjoying yourself. So the sun is important uh, not just for for skin health and, and to absorb the UV, the rays, and yep. then to <clears throat> manufacture, your, your body manufactures its own vitamin D, which is essential for good bone health, strong healthy bones. The other, other reason why the sun is important is for your day-night sleep cycle. It's important for us to know when day is and when night is, to, for the body to know when to switch off yes. and go into that phase as well. But too much sun, obviously, uh, you'd only need uh, 15 to, to 30 minutes a day. Okay, so that's and often. the midday sun, the direction of the UV as it hits the earth, uh, and your exposure, obviously, at midday is you only need a, a small period of time, like 15 to 30 minutes, to get enough vitamin D. Okay. Uh, the sun has many benefits to mood, to energy levels, etc. But combined with things like poor hydration, mm. excessive alcohol intake, and uh, not protecting the skin, uh, that's what leads to trouble. People need to understand the UVA and B rays. Mm -hmm. uh, the UVA rays, obviously, are the ones that can cause cancer, and they penetrate the skin really, really deep, and they cause structural changes to the cells. And as the skin cells underneath the, 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 sur the surface recycle and become dead cells and then exchange, what happens then, obviously, they change their genetic structure and be can become cancerous cells. UVB is the one that causes the burn. Mm the sunburn, you know, the red hot inflamed skin over there. So protecting your skin is essential with a decent uh, SPF factor, uh, preferably 50 yeah. or up. But then some people will say, I've been working so hard on this tan for so long, I need to maintain it. But <laughs> maintaining it for longer, uh, you know, than what is necessary, I guess, could be dangerous for your skin, right? It can. So uh, it makes you uh, age. Yes, yes. Obviously, I, I hate uh, saying that the direct uh, tanning effect of the sun is more detrimental to you than actually having spray tan. Wow. So wow. to understand that, people need to keep that in context. Yes. And then obviously the sun beds are not the greatest. They also have effects on, on the UV uh, affecting the, the deeper down layers okay. in terms of precancerous cells and so on. So right. one must be look at the exposure, the frequency, and, and your protection regularly. Absolutely. We'll hold on to that thought for just a second and keep our lines open. 0 to 1430 mm. as we continue chatting holiday health on Expresso. It's my feel-good birthday show. Welcome back. It is a Tuesday morning. We're live, large and in charge on your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. And we're talking all about holiday health and how important that Indeed. is, especially because you'll be there, Sasuima, getting your Baywatch <laughs> shots on for the gram. But you've got to do it safely. Mm. We're talking about swimming right now with Dr. Green. And um, people love to just dive into any body of water to cool, to down, cool down, right? But there's a, a few things for you to watch out yeah. for before you just make your run and, and your dive entrance, in because it could yeah. be dangerous. So what are some of the th those things to look out for? I think you need to know the terrain. So people that jump off, uh, I almost said cliff, cliffs, cliffs, yeah, cliffs, for cliffs, example, yeah. when you're doing pool diving, you don't know if there are any rocks beneath the surface. Yes. Seen terrible things of head injuries, <laughs> people not knowing from that height, say five meter jumps into these lovely crystal pools, yes. that there are rocks underneath with head injuries, oh. concussions, that kind of thing. And those, I mean, those are deadly mistakes. Mm -hmm. Also, look at the area, look at the sewage drainage. 
as we know that sewage pipes run into the sea. So the content of sewage and E. coli and germs in that specific area, is it a, uh, declared a safe swimming area yes. uh, as well? Obviously some people are sensitive to some of the plants and organisms that grow in water, looking at algae and mosses, that kind yeah. of thing. So you have to be careful with all that. And then of course, you need to look at the terrain. You need to understand underfoot, is it slippery? Are there, for example, really bad uh, ditches in the sea sand? Coral. Or holes? Coral reefs, uh, you, you've got to be careful of so many things when you... So, firstly, research the area you're going there to. There we go. Yeah. Beforehand. I mean, we, we, we spoilt for choice with technology now and know whether it's a swimming beach or not. Mm -hmm. Look for lifeguards, especially if there are children around. Everyone's so relaxed and enjoying the sun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't tell you. Every December has its toll and claims so many lives unnecessarily yeah. because people drifting or falling asleep, having a few beers on the beach and then passing on and realizing, oh, dear, my eight-year-old is just hasn't been here for an hour. Yeah, yeah. So we need to really be vigilant about that, obviously. You and then, of course, the tides. Yeah, you mentioned children. Um, how, how careful do parents have to be about public pools with chlorine and, and how it affects their children's eyes? Great question. So the, 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 clean, the cleanliness or hygiene factor is important, and, and obviously the duration of time you spend in the water yeah. is what affects the eyes. You can get chemical conjunctivitis, which is a chemical reaction in the eye where you get a red, painful red eye that's yes. constantly itchy and irritated and tearing. Uh, so you need to obviously then limit your, your amount of time. Use goggles. A lot of people use swimming goggles mm -hmm. if they have sensitive eyes. Yeah. Uh, that And then good eyewear, obviously, protecting uh, the reflection off the water. Yeah. with decent sunglasses. Now, all the surfers in the studio have been trying to educate me on, on rip tides or rip currents yes. and how dangerous it is that they are. So yeah, could you at, explain yeah, that to us a little bit? Look at the white waves on the side and look at that dark uh, patch in the middle over there. That's due to the contour of the land, firstly. Yes. There could be deeper areas in the middle. And then you could also have, uh, for example, look at the white waves on the side. The problem is when you try and swim back onto the shore Against through that, that arrow. tide, that arrow is is basically sucking you in rapidly. It returns to the ocean quickly yeah. in view of the, the, the lay of the land and so forth. So you need to go around, parallel to the shore first, where those white lines are, going yeah. up there, parallel mm -hmm. or parallel, and around the riptide to get out. Yeah. So that's the, that's, and that's then the, the, the bottom line. Don't waste energy trying, trying to, to go straight down the, the middle. So yeah. re rather really go with it and then go around and then come out. I guess it's always making sure that you are swimming in an area that is uh, watched over by lifeguards or where you can Essential. be seen by family or friends. You know, yes, adventure is cool and all, but don't put yourself yeah, um, in danger. All right, we've got one more uh, subject to discuss with you okay. when it comes to the holidays. One that you think is the furthest thing away, stress. Yeah. Stress during the holidays. Give us a uh, call on zero. 2214309881. We'll be right back with Dr. Green. It's my feel good birthday show. All right, now, if, if anything, a holiday is supposed to be is stressless, but some people just find a way of stressing out about planning things, making sure everybody's contacted. Did you pack the right things? Dr. Uh, Darren is here to tell us about how to reduce holiday stress, and perhaps you've got some questions to ask. So give us a call on 0214309881. So how is it, Dr. Darren, that we find ways of making holidays stressful? Well, school holidays are coming. Yeah. <laughs> Parents are like, ah, <laughs> because we so used to our schools and our teachers being involved with helping us yes. look after our own children when we're working. So Wednesday, most schools are closing, mm -hmm. and that means contingency plans need to be in place. It yes. means pe people and parents are going to be spending a lot more time with their children than usual. Yeah, because it doesn't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that mom and dad stop working now that your schools are Correct. done, because that goes done. on until a certain time. 100%, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. So there's a lot more synchronized calendars that needs to happen. Who's going who's gonna to be at home that time to that time? Synchronizing all that. So people with children, sure. People with our children have family coming to visit over, over, over Christmas and New Year. <laughs> and the family's coming, and that obviously is <laughs> enjoyable. But with that comes obviously interesting group dynamics of yes. what different people expect so from how a holiday. to reduce it then? Yes, so I think uh, obviously know your limits in terms of uh, alcohol, firstly, that's a big one. Don't drink and drive. We learn this every year. Don't lose your, your loved ones and don't let them lose you by making bad decisions yeah. around that. And uh, obviously, I think. You know, we like uh, dogs that are, are let free, that have been in, cap in captivity for a long time when it comes to holiday. You try to catch up on all your recreation and leisure because mm. you haven't had any at regular intervals. <laughs> so pull up the handbrake a little bit and just, just uh, you know, absorb uh, a bit of the environment. Get outdoors, try and move in your holiday as well. Don't just lay on the couch and, and just laze. 
try and do things obviously that are good for your soul as well. Get yes. some, get some light, get some beautiful scenery around you. Do the things you don't normally get to do. That's true. And obviously uh, that will then cause a lot of endorphin release and feel good hormones within safe environments. Although somebody did say to me very recently that it, it doesn't hurt to be on holiday and to wake up in the morning oh. and then, then just feel like you don't have to do anything. No comp compulsory stuff. Pull up a book. There's your <laughs> cup of tea, read your book, and just don't do anything for a whole day. That's okay. You no, can actually do in that. In pajamas the whole day. No snooze. You don't have to that How, Don't set an alarm. <laughs> How's that? How's that? Oh, Dr. Green, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Good Always man. a pleasure to have you in. Thank you very much to our callers for your questions and comments as well. Uh, we will be doing this again next week. Yeah.